You've got a little boy, a little girl, and they are the cutest kids anyone has ever seen. Personality plus they ought to be in showbiz. Well, if you want them in showbiz, you better meet Edie Robb. She is the president of Talent Works. And we'll be talking with a mother of child actors, Ellen Manning, and with Adrian Bird, a mother of a child actor. You are the name of the game, Edie. You've been at it a long time, and there is nothing about child actors, model, Broadway, you name it, that you don't know. What a life. How come you chose this hectic way for yourself professionally? It's very exciting. And I was always starstruck. I always wanted to be Edie Gourmet. So this is another way of doing it, right? Tell yeah, but you're handling <laughs> mothers, ambitious mothers. You're handling kids, and some of them are going to inevitably be rejected for that photo session, for that modeling job, whatever. We look for the very special children that are very, very bright, red hair, freckles, blondes, have more fun. But uh, the child that's very, very outgoing, speaks beautifully, and... and nothing bothers them and that's what we're really looking for personality is more than anything else and of course that they read well things like that 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 also is a big big plus they have to be able to read excellent well there was a an article a very complete and good article about you in the philadelphia inquirer and it was a madhouse there you were with the phones ringing constantly and people trooping in and out it was a circus and yet you said you thrive circus. on it Yes, I love it. I just can't sit still. We just All right, we're talking about uh, the positive things. The talented kid, read, resilient, can be rejected, not fall apart. What does it take from a mother? What kind of a mother must you have? You tell me and then I'll ask the it mothers about really, your It's a job. <laughs> it's a job for the mother because the mother, li living in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area, you have to get these children to New York. There's a, there is work here. There is work in Philadelphia. Uh, Washington and Baltimore, but most of all, the, the, the big money and the important jobs are in New York, and you have to get that child to New York. And for a child, it's a big job because an adult goes home and they have a beer or they have a glass of wine and they can relax, but for a child, they have to do their homework, and it's, it's very difficult, right. but it's exciting and fun, and, and they can really speak to anyone. They can be in front of presidents, in front of kings, and they can handle themselves. That's all right when they're little and they are cute as a button. And what happens when these stars, your kid actors, get older and they outgrow parts and they get rejected because they're no longer cute, they're gangling and maybe a little happening? I think if you take the lessons and you stick with it, you'll work. I think it's a lot of perseverance and study and you have to want it with all your, of your being because it's such a difficult road to hoe. Um, Ellen Manning's son, Christopher, just landed a wonderful part in his show at the Annenberg Theater called No Strangers. He plays the role of Wally, and that's going to be a lot of work for him because he has to go to school all day, rehearse after school, and then, of course, when the performances start, he has the performances to worry about. Before we hear from the mothers, I think we ought to look at the children. And first, we're going to look at your son, Edie. And your son has made it, and he has been in Les Miserables yes. in a very big role. Yes, he's, the, he's been on Broadway several times. He's there done, he is. He's done a film called uh, Christmas Story with Darren McGavin. R.D. Yes, R.D. They call him R.D. And uh, it was a long road with R.D. because he is not the beautiful, waspy child that they usually want with the freckles. He's very character. So we just very stubborn and we kept going and he's done very, very well. He's a lot of commercials running and uh, he still auditions every single day of his life, hoping for that series or that next film. And we're going to look at Ellen Manning's children. They are a charming little girl. What a beauty she has. Does she have red hair like a mama? No, she has straw, uh, blonde. Blonde Sandy hair, blonde all hair. right. And your son? Christopher. And we're going to have a picture of Chris. Christopher is the one that's going to do No Stranger at the Annenberg. And he starts rehearsals tomorrow. Yes, it's going to be a... All right, there he is. Now that's the kid, that all-American look. That's yes. in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's him. All right, those teeth. I love the teeth. Well, that gives him, <laughs> Remember, that gives him something. I do like the teeth. The teeth are a big thing. But he looks yeah. like yeah. a boy looks like at that age, or the ideal little natural kid. Well, in food commercials, they're very particular about how the teeth look. What's wrong with his teeth? I don't see anything wrong with his Well, teeth. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they're just a little bit crooked, but we don't notice But doesn't that, that make him average? I, th I think it does. I think it makes him more interesting. 
All right, and we're going to look at Adrian. <coughs> Little boy. And there's a darling. What a sweetness in that face, Adrian. Is he yeah. as sweet as at home? <laughs> he's, a, he's a normal child. <laughs> um, he, um, he has a lot of substance, though. Um, he's a good child, a uh, bright kid, um, but he's normal. I mean, you know, he breaks glasses, and um, <laughs> he doesn't want to clean his room, and um, he messes up the bathroom. Um, and he, he, he lies. does all the things he lies to uh, cover up anything he's done. He tells those little white lies. He calls them white lies. Being the mother of a child actor isn't easy because you are going to have to transport, right? You are have to going to be. You're going to have to be there. They can't do anything on their own. How old are the children? Chris is eleven. Sarah's eight. Eugene is twelve. An idea is fifteen. An idea is fifteen. All right, you're in charge. What does it take from your life? What kind of sacrifices do you have to make? Well, I don't think anybody who does this could have a full-time job outside of their house. Right. You have to be ready at a moment's notice sometimes to go. Adrian does have a full-time job. I have a full-time job. And so do I. Do well, how do you <laughs> manage? <laughs> we will tell you a very interesting story about um, <laughs> Eugene and we, the three of us were in California together. Uh, Eugene was being tested for this show, Amen. They were adding a new character. And Adrian and I and Eugene went out and they put us up in this wonderful s hotel suite and picked them up at the airport by limo. Right? Oh, that was nice. And it was wonderful. That and was... met Sherman Hemsley and, and, and Earl Greenberg and everyone connected with the show and they said, you're the one, you're the one. Everyone ran to the telephone and told everyone that Edie Robb's kid landed this part in Amen. They gushed over him and ah, uh, they loved him so. And then Brandon Tartikoff decided that he was not the look that they wanted for this show. And after telling everyone and telling Eugene, you're the one that's it, he did not get the part. And so you have to understand that it's a wonderful, exciting business, but it's also cruel in a lot of ways. Right, how does he take it? I'm sure on the surface, okay. What are his feelings about this kind of thing? Life at the top and all of a sudden it comes crashing down, there's no part. That's the hardest part about this business, uh, to um, explain to the children that there are disappointments in life. And um, we talk about disappointment. We've gone, all, we've gone so far as to look the word up in a dictionary. What does the, what does the word disappointment mean? And, um, but not getting amen was very disappointing to Eugene. Uh, but I, we, we talked about it and I said to him, but I don't think it's the grand design for you, so let's not worry about that. Did he bite? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you would have had to move to California? Yes, I would have had to re reshuffle my life. Uh, I was not going to move to California because I have a full-time job. I have a responsible position. What were you going to do if you got the job? His dad was going to move out there with him. And you would And have... I was going to fly out there two or three times a month. Uh, in the beginning, I was going to come every weekend uh, and then... Um, uh, you know, for a couple of months, every weekend, and then after that, two or three times. Uh, your life was going to change. The entire texture of your life. Yes. You would not be a family unit as you were. No. That was going to be a worth it to you. Apparently. It's, it's for him. It's what he wants. He wants it. He wants it. Well, how does he know he wants it? He's a little kid. He's what does a, he know about choices? The kids in this business are little adults. Are they little they adults or do they get to be little adults? They become that. By force of the nature of the of business. business. Oh, they're, they're yes. very bright <clears throat> mm -hmm. very quick. And also, a, a TV series could, could make you financially secure. All right, now wait a minute. They're Maybe bright and they're education. quick. You don't mean they're, ba they're, they're intrinsically... They learn to be, and the only kids who really make it are kids who take good direction. That's You're right. doing they're a commercial. You don't understand the command. You can't deliver. Mm -hmm. You don't have that talent. You just don't make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Even on a runway, am I right? That's right. You've got to be able to do it, whatever it may be. That's right. And actors. So these kids are the ones who make out mm -hmm. financially. They are the special ones. They are the special mm -hmm. to begin with. That's right. Your children are special. What have they done? Well, as Edie said, Chris is going to be in this play. This is his mm -hmm. second play that he's done. Uh, they've done many commercials, voiceovers. They've been, both of them were in Fatal Attraction. They've been in a few movies. They're, they're well-rounded in the business. They've done right. a lot of everything. More than anything, what does this mean to you, this kind okay. of success that you've gotten? 
Well, my children, what does it mean to the family? Uh, I believe that it has made the children able to speak to adults. They have a lot more self-confidence than a lot of children their own age. The money is good when you make it, but also you're putting a lot of money out for transportation. Every time you go for a, a go-see, is that well, what they the call thing. it? New York calls because or you get the Because we live in Philadelphia, it's very expensive. It is. Because the traveling, the train, the driving, the parking, the food and everything else. And it is very expensive. And then you have to join the Screen Actors Guild or AFTRA, which is the American mm -hmm. Federation of Radio and Television Artists, which is seven, eight hundred dollars. And you have to pay dues twice a year. So, and then you have agents and, and managers commissions. There's a lot of expenses. But if they get a series or they start doing films and they get those residuals coming in from the TV commercials, they can really pay for their college education and set them up very nicely. And let's face it, nowadays it's very difficult. It's not like years ago when a mother could stay home and not have to work. Now everyone has to work to keep these families going because it's so expensive to live. And someone like, like Eugene for this, uh, this series would have been a wonderful experience working with all these Philadelphia people that have made it big in Hollywood. Uh, Eugene did another very fascinating thing. He went to the Sundance Institute in uh, Utah and he did a film that Robert, that's Re Robert that's Redford's, Redford's Institute company. and he worked with wonderful people like Alfie Woodward and, and it was a wonderful experience. So uh, as Anthony Newley once said to me when I was questioning the educational process, he <laughs> said to me, it is absolutely the education, you will get the education and I, I, you know, I'm very tough on that, I want to make sure that education is there. But the people that they meet, like the presidents, like kings and queens, they can go anywhere and speak to anyone. They've got the poise, the self-confidence. It's a wonderful experience. But they're out of the mainstream. They do not live the lives of well, other children in, do, in their area. Or do, do they really? I, I try to yeah. keep my kids normal. Chris is in Little League. He plays soccer. Mm -hmm. He's in the band at school. All right, but he's in the band, but that very day that he is to perform, Edie calls you, and that agent in New York has said, I saw in your catalog, I know that kid from a commercial he did. He's the one. I think he's got a chance. Have him try out for this commercial. That does And happen. he doesn't get in the band that night. He's absent. Yeah, he's got or a little band in the That does happen. Months. All right. But there are <laughs> lots of times that you can, you can book your child out and say, well, I have a big concert coming up. I can't go on such and such a day. And we try to work around it, but, and I, I tell my son all the time also, it's important to go to the school dances and, and attend the activities and have a normal home life. That's why I think it's so important that they stay in their own school system. And if you have to do a film like Chris Young of uh, Max Headroom fame, he is from Malvern, he goes to a school there, they send the work to California and he does the work with the tutor and he comes back when, he, when he's able to come back. So it gives them a semblance of normalcy. R.D. You can't get bigger in a way than Broadway. Oh, sure, you can be in a commercial, but Broadway has prestige. And right. your son well, has done it in the great show on Broadway. And it's a wind-up for this segment, but we're going to talk more and give you step-by-step. Step. If you've got the kid, we've got the talent scout. We'll be back. Long ago, when we were young, our parents took care of us. They were always there when we needed them. They gave us their love and devotion. We never thought they would someday grow old and frail and need us to take care of them. If you are a caregiver and need help, write for Channel 17's free resource guide, Box 7775, Philadelphia. You've got a beautiful child, a beautiful baby, a beautiful teenager, and they ought to be in pictures, they ought to be in commercials, they ought to be in show business. And of course, Edie Robb, the president of Talent Works, is the person to see. And I'm not going to give out her telephone number because she's besieged. I'm not going to give out her address, but if you're interested, of course, because she is in this area, you may call me at the station and I will give you this highly prized number. But she has a roster, a complete roster of children, incidentally grown-ups too. Yes. Grown-ups, babies. Uh, babies. Everything, but we're really talking about kid actors. 
All right, let's step by step. The mother is certain that this child has it to be a success. Could be print, could be modeling, could be commercials, could be Broadway, could be movies. Picks up the phone and calls you. We see everyone. Everyone that calls, we do see. And we give them something to read. We give them a couple commercials to do. See how much personality they have, how outgoing they are. If it's a baby, we pick them up, walk away from the mother, see if the child will leave the mother. And then if we like them, we'll sign them to a contract. And then they have to get pictures. And they have to get resumes. And they have to have postcards to follow up with. Because when you meet an agent, we're managers, and we deal through all the agents. And when you meet um, the agents, they see hundreds of people a week. So what you have to do is follow up with a postcard saying, hi, you know, happy Valentine's Day or happy, uh, you know, happy Thanksgiving or whatever. All right, I'm holding up the postcard. There are two shots, beguiling shots. It could be one shot. It could, could be, be one yeah. shot. And, of course, blank on the other. Hi, I'm still available. I'd love to see you. like to be in X, Y, or Z. Put a stamp on it. And this goes with regularity to regularity. those agents. Should go All like right. every other week. All right. You are a manager. You are not an agent. No, a manager is like the cog in the wheel. We, we guide the career. We do not do the um, initial. In other words, we will send you to all the agents. We introduce you to all the agents. We cannot guarantee you work that you have to sell yourself once you get in the door. But if the agents like you and start calling for you and you do your homework, you follow up with the postcards and start running back and forth to New York or Philadelphia, wherever it is, you will get auditions. And then you have to go in there. The child has to go in there and win the audition. And there could be hundreds at the audition that look just like you. What do you get out of it? We get a, a commission, a 15% commission, and the glory of seeing our talent that we picked on the, on the boob tube. All right, <laughs> now. It's worth it. The 15% is worth it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. 15% of, and of for how long, or forever. what? Uh, of what the child earns. And the agent yeah. also gets 10% of what the child earns. 13 weeks are going to be in that commercial. How does it work out for you on yes. that 15%? It works out okay. No, no, uh, what? 15% <laughs> of the gross, of the of the gross. gross yes. during that 13-week yes. period That's is right. going to go to the manager right. who sent you to the agent who said you're the one for the part. That's right. What did it cost you to make up the pictures? And are they composite pictures, several on a sheet of your child in order to leave them with agents? You can do it either way. You can have one big picture. You can have five, six shots on a in an, on an eight by ten or eight and a half by eleven composite. What's it cost? Um, anywhere from a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars. You it get depends copies on your photographer. made. That's not too expensive. Inexpensive. They make something from copies. all right yeah. hundreds, and you have copies made. And mm -hmm. there's a firm in town in that does that. Of course, yes, you, you guide them paper, along. This. You have to paper their walls with the pictures yeah, and right. the postcards, so they do not forget your right. child. The postcards but, is another expense that maybe is thirty dollars for a hundred. All right, we're talking a and couple of hundred dollars. But it pays off. Is that right? The, the initial outlay? 125 I paid for Eugene's pictures and to have them reproduced, to have them on, um, on his resume, to put the resume on the back, cost about $55 the last time I had some made. All right, the point is you are guiding the mothers. We guide the career. The agents do the negotiations. In other words, right. if you have a TV series, I can guide the agent and say, this is what I would like for this particular actor. But the agent has to do the negotiations because they are assigned the signatories with the unions. Right. When you take the children to New York to try out for a commercial, are you in that room while they're performing? No. Very rarely. It's easier not to be in the room and watch them audition. They, they actually don't permit you into no. the room. Uh -huh. you, um, when you go up for the audition, they want to see the child. You are the guardian for the child. The only reason they want us up there is because we bring the child. Mm -hmm. And we're responsible for the child, but it's the child who has to go in there and get that job. Why are stage mothers, why is it a pejorative term? Oh, she's a stage mother, she pushes her kid, she... Mm, it's like mother-in-law, like the term mother-in-law. <laughs> How did that happen? I'll tell you, there are times <laughs> that I, I see it all the time when uh, a child will be on an audition and people will ask them all kinds of questions. Well, where are you going next and what are you doing next? I tell my mothers, don't, you know, don't give out any information. Collect as much information as you can, but don't give out any information because you will find that mother on your call with their child. And it has right. happened many times. If you're a passive person, are you going to make it as a mother guiding a child in this business? As long as you go where Edie sends you to, to and your child does go on the audition, 
It has nothing to do with uh, You don't have to be aggressive. All you've got to no. do you is... show up, and you yeah. can go 50 times before you land something. Mm -hmm. Someone like my son, who is a character type, will go 50 times to a redhead with blue eyes once. And it's according to the child what they look like and, and how much personality they have. Do mm. you ever have trouble with your husbands uh, who say, what are you doing this for? Leave him What's alone. Let dinner? him go to Little League. What does he need this for? Let him be a normal kid. Yeah. When is dinner? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, when is dinner? Now, yeah. you, you I don't, don't know when work. dinner is going to be next Wait, week. You said you don't work. I have a freelance graphics business from my house. Uh, you're so nice. that's better. <laughs> Fine. But you, your husband uh, doesn't take he, the children, does he? He has maybe done it three to times York, in the last year. Uh, no. The you're the one. to be very, 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 <laughs> very accepting. And, and your husband. Okay, he was real understanding, but that was... Uh, we talked about that also, and I can be very, re really convincing. Um, but in, in, in any event, um, it's a family affair with us. Um, I, since I have a full-time job, I'm not always able to go on these auditions. I usually go on all the bookings because the contracts have to be signed. And, um, but on auditions, my mother goes, my aunt goes. Um, um, I'll never forget once he was working in Rock Hopper, um, and G Eugene had a, a part in that. Um, and my mother and my aunt took him to New York um, and they had to what happened it rained and they had to put them up in a hotel uh, overnight and my mother called me and she says I can't stay I don't have any underwear I said, I said well buy some but you can't come home <laughs> and then Eugene it was you know my aunt said well I have to go and feed the dogs I said I'll go feed the dogs you can't come home and both of them, well, both of them were senior citizens. And can you imagine them up in New York on the phone with me telling me they don't have underwear and nowhere to buy any in New York? Mm -hmm. <laughs> New York has everything. I know. Um, <laughs> do the children. Who is going to see if the child is, re is reluctant? holds back. They're such charmers that they know how to dissemble because they want to please mom and they want to please Edie. And funny. they know they're under obligation, but the truth is inside they just don't want to go and get them. rejected. But they dissemble so well that hardly, you don't really see it. Or no, do, we you, do. you might. We have one, I have yeah. one teenage boy that, that really did very, very well with a couple of commercials, Cool Whip and this and that. And he doesn't want to go anymore. He wants to wrestle and his mother begged him, but he does not want to go anymore. He doesn't go. You cannot force them, really. If they don't like it, they don't enjoy it, you shouldn't force them because they're not going to do well. Well, there are some that are forced, and they're kids that go through the paces, they're and they're the not... They're the stage mothers. They're oh, the ones oh, they're the the stage about. mothers. <clears throat> That's what you hear about, yeah. yeah. You know these kids. You've seen them. You're a mother. You can tell, can't you, when there's a reluctance, if you'll face it. Mm -hmm. Aren't there mothers who won't face it because they... Because of where we live, I don't think there's any kid in the beginning that really loves running back and forth to New York. No, that's you have to make it very, very special and say it's, it's our time together. Just you and I, no telephones ringing, no one else. Just you and I spending that time together and make it fun, make it a game. Maybe go to the zoo in Central Park or take him out to eat or buy him a little trinket or, or just make it a fun event. But still, it is a grind when you have to do it every day or four or five times a week. It is a grind, and the kids have to love it and enjoy it. And maybe if they don't like the trip, just enjoy the fact that they're seeing themselves on television. That is fun. When you do finally get to see them on yeah. the, in the newspaper or on television or on the movie screen, it's neat. I'm going to show the talent works, E. Rob's talent works, and... This goes, I presume, to all the agents. Everybody's this got is the it. Book and that a lot of agents uh, and managers. Yeah, put she out. has adults, of course, but famous for your child actors. We send this yes, to all the yeah. casting directors, all the mm -hmm. agents, all the producers, anyone we can think of to show them the talent that we have. All right, let's talk about Philadelphia in this area. Can somebody come to you uh, and say, "Well, I want it for my kid, and he wants it, but I really don't want to keep running to New York. I'll take a little. I'll just take some runway work." Is there enough print work? Is there enough here? And you'll say, all right, we'll work with you just in the area. Is that possible? There's a little bit. There, there is some work here, and they have a lot of films that are being done here. You can do extra work. But let's be honest. If they, all the films that are being made here now, they're going to take the leads from Hollywood or yeah. New York. They, there's a stigma attached to it. They feel that if you're in Philadelphia, well, you can't be much good, or you would have gone to New York. It's not true. How many times have they have hired Philadelphia people for jobs in Philadelphia, but they auditioned in New York is absolutely ridiculous. But they, it has happened, and they don't realize that there is so much talent here. 
and that's where you should stick to the talent here. Well, they obviously can't do <coughs> runway work uh, because they'd be in school. And what about modeling work you know for the brochures, for instance, the big brochures? How much of it is done here? Most well, of it is done. Well, we have a lot here. My daughter's done a lot of runway and a lot of print. They both done print. When they were younger, they did print. All right. The Bonwood Teller uh, brochure, the Macy's, the Bloomingdale's. That's New York. That's all New York. Are York. there any yeah. of the big brochures that come out of Philadelphia? Not really. There's a All lot. Right. There's J.G. Hook. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of there's a few agents here that strictly do Philadelphia work, but that's not where the rainbow really is. Mm -hmm. When you say rainbow, you're talking about other money. In other words, if you if you earn sixty-five dollars an hour and you have to pay an agent, the manager, and the trip, and you only work for one hour, it doesn't even pay you to leave school. Whereas if you do a commercial and you earn three hundred and thirty-three dollars for the day, or maybe overtime, and and then there's the residuals that come in, and you're sitting home collecting those residuals. That's what makes it worthwhile for the well, parents. You've got account. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two beauties. One grows up a little and somehow loses that look. The other child is still there, still with that star quality, still right for what's being asked for today. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened. I don't know yet. They're <laughs> still getting cuter. <laughs> They're staying cute. So it far, has, so good. It has happened with a lot of people. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, the brothers went on to, to great success and the sister went by the wayside and you don't know why. Uh, there is one family where the brother and sister were in a soap opera and they only wanted the brother. And, the, and we couldn't understand it. We'll see them both. No, 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 we only want the brother. He's the blonde wasp. And what happened was they ended up going both auditioning and they both were used for that soap. But you have to get past the agent. Do your kids take dance lessons, singing lessons, acting lessons? Um, my, my son takes uh, singing lessons, dancing lessons, um, keyboard lessons. These children have to be multi-talented. Uh, you can be a good actor. You can be able to take a script and read it for five minutes and get up and do what you have to do. Um, but you need to be able, but suppose the script calls for you to sing a line. Or suppose you have to dance to do a tap set of shuffle or whatever and uh, these kids have to be able to do that um, and you have to make it you've got to we as parents have to continually make this life that we these children have chosen for themselves interesting uh, they've got a school um, they have auditions to do they have bookings they have lessons dance lessons and singing lessons and um, it gets to a point with the children they get tired just as we get tired. They don't want to go to singing lessons. They don't want to go to dancing lessons. And uh, they have, because they have, my little boy has, he loves soccer now. And he's missed two of his soccer. Yeah, but you're going to make sure he does all those other things. Oh, because yes. let's face it, that's part of his possible success. We're the best. And you're going to do it. So, all right. The upside is they learn discipline. Yeah. They learn yeah. how to be in charge of their lives and to make it. Well, it's a wacky, wonderful world, apparently. And if you make it, lots of bucks, but it's tough, tough, tough. And thank you, Edie Robb, President of Talent Works and Mothers. Thank you for being here. And we'd like to hear from you. Won't you drop a line to Delaware Valley Forum? That's Fox 7775 in Philadelphia. We're always interested in you and the concerns of your community.